atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. stand and sing that with us? The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds
Lord is in this place. Amen. Let's lift our voices with all of creation, giving Him praise. wonderful to be in God's house this morning. And welcome to all of you, whether you're here physically or virtually, we are glad that you have joined us today to worship the Lord together with us. Uh, if we haven't met yet, my name's Alan, I'm the pastor here, and what a privilege it is to gather here. I see a lot of people wearing red. Jan was like, Alan, you forgot to wear red. Happy Valentine's Day. It is so good to see you. I think that the Lord has something amazing in store for each one of us. And uh, I'm excited to see what all else he's going to do besides just bless us with his presence in worship together today. Well, I'm doing the announcements this morning because there is something very special that I need to draw to your attention. Normally at this time, we as a church family would be beginning the process... <clears throat> 
of conducting our annual church elections. But if you have a bulletin, I want to be sure and encourage you to look in there at some information that's contained there. You can find the bulletin online if you're joining us virtually. And there is a highlighted section that says annual church elections. And here's a summary of what it says. COVID messed everything up. Isn't that an easy summary? You know, this year, any problem I have in my life, I'm just going to say the problem is because of COVID. Uh, And uh, you probably ought to try that too. I think we can get away with it. But it's really true with this one. Um, The the election process for us as a church, as we looked at it, uh, was uh, something that we, uh, at the uh, at the encouragement of the general superintendents of the Church of the Nazarene, on the advice of the district superintendent of Eastern Michigan District Church of the Nazarene, and at the recommendation of the nominating committee of this local church, which did meet and made this recommendation, uh, with which I completely concur, we asked and are asking all of our currently serving um, leaders, our board members, our Nazarene Missions International um, Council members, our Sunday School, SDMI, Sunday School Discipleship Ministries International, there's a mouthful, um, board members uh, and other uh, officers who are serving in the life of our church uh, to who have been serving and are currently completing their year of service for the church because our church is fiscal year ends at the end of this month, we have asked them and almost all of them have agreed to serve for another year. Help me say thank you to all of them who have agreed to serve for another year. Uh, And uh, because one of the requirements of the manual of the Church of the Nazarene is, is that we vote. You must be physically present, a member, but physically present to vote, which creates all kinds of obstacles for many of us who are not yet comfortable gathering and all the logistics. So this is where we are for this next year. I'm excited uh, about the leaders that we have who have been serving and are going to continue to serve. Um, And in a moment, we will pray together for those leaders. But let me mention a couple of other quick announcements uh, before I do that. Uh, We, throughout COVID, early on, we had uh, an initiative to pray for many of our schools and teachers students certainly throughout our area, uh, but since it's been a while since that was emphasized, uh, once again, uh, our Spiritual Life Committee is encouraging us. Uh, If you had already signed up to do that, be sure and go back to the table in the lobby and let them know uh, that you are are continuing to pray for that particular teacher or school. If you'd like to to sign up and you haven't had a chance to do that or you want to be reminded of where you signed up and or want to add to what you're doing. We need to be praying for our schools, our teachers, our students in this year. It is a complicated year. COVID has messed everything up. Uh, And it's a challenging year, and we want to pray for them. Also, our Cultivate group, Young Adults, is uh, reigniting tonight. They've got a meeting tonight at 6.30 here at the church. And uh, check your bulletins for details. Uh, Children's Ministries, as we are re-engaging uh, one of the, uh, the wonderful things that we want to be able to do is uh, to get our children's ministry fully re-engaged. Uh, and in order for that to happen, we need a few good men and women who will step up and say yes uh, to Jesus and to Miss Joy and help in kids' ministry. So if you can help there, that would be wonderful. Also, this Wednesday is the beginning of the Lenten season. This Wednesday, we will be having a very special Ash Wednesday service here together as a church family. I'm almost nervous saying it because I was reminded that last year, pre-COVID, we, had, we tried to have this service and we had a massive snowstorm and we had to cancel this service. So Wednesday, Jerry, we are going to have... Mm, Lord, don't, don't do that to me again. <clears throat> God has an incredible sense of humor, and I'm often the brunt of his jokes. 
Uh, and, uh, but we are looking forward to that very, very special service that we are going to be able to share this year and usher in the Lenten season. It's a wonderful service. Come join us if at all possible. We would love to have you with us. As always, I just want to say thank you for your incredible generosity uh, during the COVID season and always to Christ and His church. Everything that we are able to do as a church family is because of the generosity, the sacrificial generosity of God's people. And I know so many give so generously. Thank you. Uh, we are not uh, physically passing the plates right now, as you've heard us repeat many, many, many times. If you will notice in the back of the room, there are boxes where you can place your offerings and your tithes. Thank you for that. Or you can give online or you can mail or drop off uh, your checks as many people do. Thank you for your continuing generosity. We appreciate it. Uh, very, very, very much. Well, let's pray together for God's gifts and also for our church leaders together as we continue to worship. God, thank you. You've blessed us so incredibly. It's just incomprehensible. We are so grateful and uh, we are so privileged, Lord, to be able to give back to you. Thank you for so many who give and give and give. We pray, Lord, that you'd bless us all uh, as we give to you today. And we pray also, Lord, for these uh, church leaders that you have given us. I pray your blessing on each one of them, men and women of faith in you, who sacrificially serve you this last year and are continuing to serve you into this next church year. Lord, we have great dreams for Richfield Church. And we pray your blessing on these leaders as they help to bring them about in these days. In the powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and only Savior, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It is Valentine's Day, or we are celebrating the love that our God has for us. So let's stand together this morning and sing of his incredible love. Oh, 
Lord, if we started to count and think about all the very good things you've done, I mean, we just would be here all day, and uh, they reflect how good you are, because you are who you say you are, and you do, as Pastor Allen always reminds us, you do what you promise you will do. Your promises are true, your promises are faithful, and for those, we thank you. We thank you most of all for the unconditional, sacrificial love that you showed for us that is the meaning of true love. Jesus, thank you today that you are, you are my Valentine, and you are here for every single one of us because you are the true foundation of every kind of love that we enjoy in our lives. So thank you, Jesus, for you. Thank you for your goodness. We want to return that love today. We want to take up our cross and follow you. 
We don't want you to just kind of come and bless us. God, we want to show up where you are. We want to we want to be on your team today. So thank you, God, for the ways that you help us in difficult times. But, but God, we're excited about what you call us to, the adventure that you call us to when we take up and follow your way, when we are loved by you and return love you with all of our hearts. So we've lifted our hearts in praise to you. And we just want to say it again. To, I say it again to you that we love you. And we also pray, Father, that that you would just help us too as we today intercede for those around us. Teach us to pray. Teach us what to say. Teach us to know how to reach out. But as you empower us, God, I pray that you'd be with every single person within the sound of my voice who needs some kind of healing. It might be with financial difficulty. It might be in particular kind of circumstance that we just really don't know how we're going to climb out of it. But Lord, you are with us. It might be a physical healing that needs to be to take place. Lord, I just pray for everyone within the sound of my voice, physically and virtually, that you would go, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would do what the doctors cannot do. We're thankful for what they can do, but Lord, we pray that you would make up the difference and that there would be physical, emotional, and healing in every way as we unite together asking. Lord, be with the messenger of the hour today. Thank you for him. Thank you for how he does demonstrate that sacrificial love that you've called us all to. And we pray that you'd bless him as he opens up the truth of the scriptures today. May we be open, may we, may we listen, and may we be changed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of God, do I bless everyone here and online, and do I bless, Lord, what occurs here today. Amen. Bless you. Well, happy Valentine's Day. I, uh, I read some quotes this week. One of them says, To not hate the neighbor is good. To love him is better. <clears throat> Another one said, uh, Love your neighbor as you love your cell phone. <clears throat> I think that might be a little harder than loving yourself right now, don't you? That uh, if yours is as expensive as mine is. <laughs> don't underestimate love at first sight. <clears throat> Many of us might not pass a second inspection. <clears throat> you might like this one better. If you think it's possible to love your wife too much, you probably haven't loved her enough. Today's Valentine's Day. I, I got Jan flowers, candy, and a card, all the normal stuff that I get her every year. She deserves a lot more, which makes me think a lot about this day. How much should I love Jesus? I, I love this story. Uh, about 250 years after Jesus walked here on the earth, there was a Christian pastor who lived near the city of Rome, Italy. And, uh, and during that time, the, uh, the Roman emperor was really persecuting Christians. He was arresting and imprisoning anyone he could find who openly identified themselves as a Christian. And uh, many Christians were actually being killed for their faith at that time. Uh, if they refused to renounce their faith in Jesus. This pastor, because the persecution was most intense right around the city of Rome, since that was the capital of the Roman Empire and where all of it was happening, uh, many, uh, the, this pastor was near Rome, and so he was helping a lot of Christians escape from that area in order to avoid this persecution. 
Well, he performed a wedding, a Christian wedding, and he was arrested. He was caught and arrested for performing a Christian wedding. While he was in prison, uh, he shared his faith with anybody who'd listen, particularly with his guards. And one of those guards was a really good man who had adopted a little blind girl. And uh, this guard asked this pastor, this guard wasn't a Christian, uh, but he asked this pastor if his God, if Jesus, could help this little blind girl. So the pastor prayed, and the God, God did a miracle, and he healed that little blind girl and gave her her sight, demonstrating the power of Jesus. And because of this, this guard and his whole household, 46 people in all, <clears throat> put their faith and trust in Christ, were baptized as Christians. The emperor found out. He was absolutely furious about this. So he had this pastor beheaded. This pastor's name was Valentine. Today, we celebrate St. Valentine's Day. It is the celebration, uh, this totally true story, it is the celebration of the passionate love that this man had for Jesus. And because of his passionate love for Jesus, he also had a passionate love for other people. But it began with his incredible fervent love for God. Valentine knew every step of the way that he was risking his life telling people about Jesus. But he didn't stop. He couldn't stop. Why? Because he just loved Jesus so much and he knew that everybody needs to know. In Mark chapter 12, if you have your Bibles, turn with me there. In Mark chapter 12, Jesus said that the most important thing that we can do in our lives is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. In other words, Jesus is saying, love God with the whole fabric, every dimension, every part of who you are, everything about you. Now, I love Jesus, and I bet everybody here would say, I love Jesus. Don't you love Jesus this morning? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? But you know what? I want to love him more. I know I need to love him more. And when I, I start to grapple with that, I, I start to, to, I don't want for my love for Jesus to even diminish an inkling. I want to passionately long to be with Jesus. And if I ever notice that that is cooling, it's like noticing that my love for Jan might be cooling off. I, I, I want to see it and, and to deal with it immediately. Because I know I can either be proactive and do something to fan the flames of my love for Jesus, or I can wait and not do anything, and then suddenly I'm going to be looking around, and, and I'm going to be going, what happened? How did I get here? How did my relationship suddenly uh, diminish so much? I want to energize my passion for Jesus. Now, in some ways... That means that we need to systematize it. And we talk about those things a lot around here, don't we? We talk about all the different things that we can do in order to build and grow our relationship with Jesus. And those things are very, very, very important. Reading the Bible and praying and all those different disciplines, we sometimes call them, that we need to be doing in order to grow in our relationship with Jesus. But, but what I really want to do is I want to choose Jesus as my valentine. See, that's just a lot more fun, isn't it? Isn't it just really weird to say? But isn't it a lot more fun to think in terms of having to systematically dot all the I's and cross all the T's and do all the stuff that I'm supposed to do? I just want to be, do you remember when you first fell in love? Any of you people ever been in love? <clears throat> Vague recollection of when that might have been true <laughs> in your life. Do you remember that feeling where your heart just raced and you were so excited? That's what I want to feel every time I think about being together with Jesus. That's just fun. How do I say, Jesus, would you be my Valentine? That's just kind of weird, isn't it? <clears throat> we'll just be weird with me a little bit for a minute. Everybody say that with me. Jesus, would you be my valentine? Jesus, would you be my valentine? 
What does that really look like? How, how do we even get there? Jesus told us. He told us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Last Sunday, we talked about this same statement. We talked about the Shema in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. Jesus said it again. The psalmist said in Psalm 63, 1, O God, you are my God. Jesus said, love God. What does that look like? Love God with all your heart. It starts with commitment. Jan and I, um, Jan said, Alan, we need to send a Valentine's Day card to our granddaughter. And I said, that's great. So I was going to the store. So I had so much fun picking out a Valentine's Day card to send to our granddaughter. It was just a blast, you know, picking out one of the things that I know that she likes and had all these little stickers in it that I knew that she would love. And she called and talked to Jan and was just so excited when she got her Valentine's Day card. It's wonderful. You know, I have a lot of friends and a lot of relationships that are incredibly special to me. Every relationship, every friendship. But my deepest friendship is with Jesus. I, I need Jesus. In fact, in my life, you know, my, my bottom line is I need Jesus and Janice. That's, that's what I need for survival. I need, I need the J's. I need Jesus and Janice in my life. Uh, see, Marriage is a commitment. It is a commitment to make your spouse your closest relationship. Marriage is so many different things, but it is built on a commitment to make that person a covenant, using biblical language, a commitment, a contract, a covenant, to make that individual be your first and closest relationship. And, and it doesn't just automatically happen, does it? it? It has to be, I want Jesus and Janice to be my special Valentines. But, but you know what? Jan and I both know, and we've told each other many times, we know that in order for our relationship to work the way we really want it to work, that for both of us, Jesus has to be our first, our number one, in our lives. Our relationship gets better the more that we make Jesus our first commitment. See, every relationship you have in your life is based on some type of commitment. Now, we know that, but have you ever really said, God, I want you to be my one and only. Jesus, I want you to be my one and only Remember, Jesus said the most important thing any of us can do, the thing that we need to do, is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That means love God more than anything or everything or anyone else. And it means to relate everything in life through the lens of your relationship with Jesus. Now, <clears throat> one of the fascinating things that COVID has, has really accelerated for us is you look around the room and, you know, uh, at least half our church family is not here and many of you are joining us online. And one of the things that I notice when I go back, because I most, most Sundays I do, is I go and, and I rewatch the service that we've just had here. When I'm here physically, you know, I can look around and I can see you and I can see whatever I choose to see on the platform and I can, I, I, I get a, a view of everything around. But when I'm watching uh, online, I see whatever the camera operator chooses for me to see. I see through that lens. Now, we have several cameras around the room, and we have some really good people who are operating cameras, and someone who is up there deciding right now which one of those cameras. Are you going to be looking at me? Are you going to be looking at the notes? Are you going to be looking you know, at, during worship at Jerry or other praise team members or something else? Whatever's interesting to whoever's operating the camera, they decide, right? We relate to everything. After I got married, everything 
was related. Everything in my life, everything was related, was viewed through that relationship. Now, before I got married, you know, I lived my own life. I did my own thing. I made my own plans. It was all, you know, me on my own doing my own thing. But after I got married, I still have my life. I, I still have goals and activities and a lot of things. But before I consider me, now it's about us. Marriage says it's about us, our family and our marriage come before me. Now I don't just have me. Now everything is viewed through that lens of us. Everything goes through that filter of us. It's the same way with Jesus. When I commit my heart and life to Jesus, I am his. And just in case you're wondering, marriage and us is a whole lot more fun than when it was just me. Even when it's bad, it's better than when it was just me. I love us together. We have a wonderful us together. And with Jesus, it is so much better than when it's just me. When I am walking with him, now it's not just me and my dreams and my goals and my family and my whatever. It's Jesus and me. And everything in life is viewed through that lens of Jesus and me together. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus want? How will this affect my relationship with Jesus? How will this affect my ability to spend time with Jesus, to be with Jesus, to give to Jesus? Would Jesus want me to watch this TV show? Would Jesus be comfortable being with me when I'm participating in this activity? How is this decision <coughs> excuse me, going to affect my relationship with Jesus? Loving God with all my heart means looking at everything through the lens of my relationship with Jesus. Loving God with all my soul, wow, or life. The word's psuche. Everybody say psuche. <clears throat> Isn't that a weird word? <clears throat> Trust Jesus with your soul. Trust Him with your soul. One of the ways that I knew uh, that, that I loved Jan enough to marry her when we were dating was that I just wanted to tell her everything. I, I felt comfortable sharing the deepest secrets that I had in my life. I told her things I didn't even know that, that I thought. I just wanted to share stuff about me and going on with me with her. Before we were even engaged, I, I just wanted to share my life and my heart with her that I hadn't, things I hadn't shared with anybody. Loving Jesus is trusting Jesus with the real you, your, your secrets, your fears, your hurts, your dreams, your ambitions. Trusting Jesus with your soul, that's trusting Jesus with, with his promise that your life is in his hands. Your life right now, and not just right now, but that, that someday when this mortal shell passes away and dies, my soul will be in his care and, and will continue with him forever. I, I'm trusting Jesus that he knows better than I know about what's important in my life. I'm trusting that he knows me better than I know myself, and he still wants to be with me now and forever. You know, the Bible says that the covenant of human marriage, you know, every time I perform a wedding, we say these words, till death do us part. Human marriage is a commitment until death. Jesus wants to be your valentine forever. Jan taught me a long time ago that trust must be earned Jesus earned your trust when he created you. Jesus earned our trust again when he died for us on a cross. Jesus is earning our trust right now as he is seated at God's right hand interceding for us. Jesus loves you right now more than you love yourself. Trusting Jesus with your soul means trusting him with everything in you your dreams, your goal, everything, all your fears and uncertainties and doubts. It's
It's trusting Him enough that all of that, I'm not sure, can be trusted to Him until you are willing to live life His way. All of the uncertainties that we experience about what's the best way to live life, trusting Jesus with your soul means, Jesus, I'm going to try it your way. Even though maybe other people advise me to go a different route, I'm going to do life your way. Loving God with all my heart and my soul and my mind. Loving God with my mind means that every day is, is a struggle, a, a, a struggle in a good sense to want, to strive, to try to know God better so I can love Him more. It means to go all out to know God. Most people start to get know, to know God, and we all try to get know, to know God in, in three ways. First of all, uh, we become aware of God and we begin to think about God by observation. We observe God's activity in the world. So many, many, many people think about God and believe in God simply in the sense that they recognize there must be a creator because in the snow, beautiful, I mean, you may be sick of it, but it's still gorgeous. On the trees with the, the it was so beautiful and the sunshine. And, and uh, you know, I did talk to someone this morning who wrote their Valentine in the sand on the beach. And I deeply resent them, but I love them. And, uh, you know, but the snow is gorgeous. God's creation, you look at it and you see how beautiful it is and you realize God is obviously a lover of beauty and complexity and it's vast and it's amazing and complex and God is obviously brilliant and beyond comprehension. You observe the world around you and begin to know God. You get to know God through this kind of observation. Did you know that several of the astronauts who walked on the moon uh, after they came back from walking on the moon became preachers? One of them said that he was struck by the awesomeness of creation and it sent him searching for a more serious relationship with God. We get to know God through observation and through conversation. Anyone can pray. Most people do pray. Everyone should pray. God loves to talk with people. And prayer is a tremendous way to build your relationship with God. If you're going to have a relationship with somebody, you've got to talk with them. But the best way to get to know God is through revelation. The Bible is God revealing. That's where the word revelation there uh, makes most sense. Revealing himself to us. One guy said the Bible is God's autobiography of his life with his people. I like that. See, I can look at your life and I can get to know a lot about you based on what I observe. And then I can talk with you and I can get to know you even better based on our conversations that we have about, you know, baseball and whatever else may be going on in the world. Uh, but the best way for me to get to know the real you is for you to tell me who you really are. The best way for me to get to know God is for God to tell me who he is. And he does that most clearly in the Bible. I mentioned that this Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. Lent is when we prepare together to celebrate Easter. And we do that by reflecting on how good God is and how much he loves us. And how much he wants to help us. To love Him more. Loving God with all my mind means trying to get to know Him. Loving God with all my strength means serving God with the material me. Now, it's fascinating. I mentioned that last Sunday, Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Shema, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. Jesus adds to that. Now, you know, some people think that, that these are all just one conversation that Jesus had uh, and that, that the different writers are seeing that conversation in different ways. I, I tend to think differently. I think, you know, I'm, as Pastor Allen, there are certain questions that I get a lot. 
A lot of you are parents, you know that, that you get the same question over and over, and that's okay, that's just normal. I get certain questions over and over and over and over again. Jesus did too. The question of the greatest commandment was a question that was really, really, really uh, an, an important one at the time that Jesus was here on the earth. The, the rabbis were really debating it. All of the people were talking about it a lot. I think Jesus answered this question many, many, many times. And what's fascinating is that he would add little different distinctives, but he always said the same thing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, he says, in Mark's version, which we're looking at today, and in Luke's version. According to Matthew's version, uh, that time he only said, love the Lord, like the Shema. He just did heart, soul, and mind. In Luke's version, when he was explaining it further, he added the story of the Good Samaritan. Why did he emphasize several times strength why did he add that serving God with all of my strength what does that mean Jesus said it was important what does that mean to love God with all of my strength it means to love God with my time when you say to somebody you know I want you to be my valentine what's the most important thing you can give to them your time Give your valentine your time. The most precious commodity that any of us has is our time. I mean, life just goes like that, right? Give your time. You want to get more passionate in your relationship with Jesus, love him with your time. For me to love God with my time is an incredibly powerful expression of my love. By the way, that's why God put in the Ten Commandments. He set aside the Sabbath day and said, if you really love me, give me your time. Set aside a day a week for us. Yeah, I know you've got so many other wonderful things going on, but don't fill up your time with all these other things. I want it to be about you and me first. Prioritize me. Worship me on that day. Spend time with me and my people studying and praying and growing and sharing and teach your family about me on that day. And see, loving Jesus with my strength means giving Jesus my time. Loving Jesus means choosing depth of relationship and intimacy with Jesus like I desire intimacy with my wife, and, and that takes time. Time observing and conversing and revealing ourselves to each other. I remember when Jan and I first started dating, do you remember when you first just were falling in love? You know, you, I, I couldn't wait uh, to, to pick her up for a date, and, and, and that time that we shared together would just fly by, and we could spend hours just getting to know each other and talking and sharing activities or just being together. Now, 35 years later, with kids and grandkids and jobs and responsibilities, sometimes we have to be very intentional about spending time together, keeping current on who we are and where we're going. Time, it's so important. God wants to know you. Make Him your valentine. He wants to know you intimately and closely and passionately. He wants you to love Him with all your heart and soul, and mind, and strength. That takes time. Time in worship, and connection, and in every other way. It also means, loving God with my strength means giving my, Him my time. It also means giving Him my talents. It's serving Him, my strength. God has gifted every one of us in so many different, amazing kinds of ways. Loving God with my strength means giving Him acts of service, serving Him in the ways that you find opportunity and that you discover your availability. My relationship with God grows deeper as I serve Him. Loving God with my strength means my time, my talents, and my resources. One man said this, and I've never forgotten it. He said, I, I can tell what you love by looking at your calendar, your time, and your checkbook, your money. What do you really love? That's where you invest. Jan and I are expecting a grandson in July, and we are just stupid excited about this new baby. We just, 
Jan went to the store the other day to get something. I, I don't even know what she went to get. I don't even know if she got it, uh, something we needed. But she spent a lot more time, she told me, over in the baby section looking at stuff for our future grandson. Now, we have no idea what this child needs. It doesn't matter. See, where, where love grows, money flows. Love can be measured by your willingness to give. Everything that I have belongs to Jan, and I love giving her stuff. Uh, I'm not going there. Everything I have. <laughs> Jan and I, uh, our first date. Oh, what a disaster. Alan, I'm such a fool. Uh, our first date was uh, the end of January. And, uh, well, you know, the end of January, then comes February, right? Well, Jan's birthday is February the 17th, Ash Wednesday this week. Um, and uh, Valentine's Day is the 14th, and then comes her birthday, right? Well, we had one date, and then here comes Valentine's Day. You've had one date with somebody you really like and you want to get to know, but what do you do for Valentine's Day? Well, I went out and I carefully selected a card and a present, but see, I was stupid, and I thought Valentine's Day was the 15th, not the 14th, so I didn't give it to her on the 14th, and then I'm debating within myself, do I give it to her on the 15th, and since I didn't give her anything on the 14th, she didn't tell me her birthday was the 17th, and so I was in trouble for two things and almost ruined our relationship before it ever got started, which has nothing to do with anything. But it is a fun story, and it's actually true. <laughs> but I eventually gave her the gift, and she eventually forgave me. That took longer. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I have is hers, and I love giving stuff to her because I love her. Everything that we have belongs to Jesus. We love giving to Jesus. He's our valentine. Loving Jesus with your strength means loving him with your time and your talents and your resources, not begrudgingly, but because you just, you just can't wait. Jesus was saying that my passion for God means that I love God with every part of me. Every one of these terms, heart, soul, mind, and strength, really means the whole you. It's just looking at it through different dimensions of who we are. And it's Jesus saying, God saying, get passionate about God. Now, you know, guys, that may sound weird to you to say, Jesus, be my valentine. But, you know, don't get afraid to be passionate toward God. You know, we spend so much time around the church saying, now we need to control our passions instead of talking about how to legitimately release the passions that God has built into us. Holiness is not the destruction of passion. Holiness is the proper demonstration. It is channeling the passions that God has built into us creatively into their appropriate holy channels. God wants to be your one and only. Jesus becomes the number one love of my life, and he became my obsession and he continues to grow as the number one love for me. And then I get passionate about whatever else in life that he and I are passionate about together, whatever that may be. I don't care if it's golf or football or whatever else it is in your life that you love. Jesus wants to share that with you and be passionate about it together with you and be there with you. I have been on the golf course where Jesus had to sneak off because of demonstrations of inappropriate passion, I want Jesus first and everything else together with Him. Get passionate about Jesus. The reason that you can have a valentine till death do us part, the reason that I'm looking forward to that is because Jesus is in the middle of my marriage making it better by His grace every day. Elizabeth Barrett Browning said, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 
I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I think that would be a really fun, wonderful thing to do with Jesus this week. Count the ways that you love Jesus. Tell him. Name them one by one, as we used to say in that old song. Spend some time with Jesus this week. Remind him how much, how glad you are that he is your valentine. Let's pray together. God, thank you. Thank you that we love you because you first loved us and we are still discovering the height and breadth and depth and richness of your love for us. Thank you that you invite us into that journey of incredible, unimaginable, life-giving love. We pray, Lord God, together today that you, thank you for choosing us as your valentine. We choose you back. Won't you be our valentine, Jesus? Help us know more and more and more about who you are and how we might love thee. Bless everyone here who's joining us in any way with you. More and more and more of you. I pray in the powerful, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Valentine. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us.